Previously on Two Up and Overloaded. It was our first day on the road in East Malaysia, making our way across the huge state of Sarawak on a small and squished motorcycle, a KTM 250 adventure that we had rented. This new motorcycle we had it had power, it had suspension, it's a KTM, so we felt at home. <laughs> but it was squished, not the yeah. motorcycle itself, but cramped. Like this way. Us yes. On it. And I didn't have a top box on it, but our luggage situation solely consisted of a back bag, a tank bag, and our backpacks, yeah. which we always ride with. Yeah. And um, yeah, even with that, it was quite squished. My backpack was like, way up high and I was feeling very uncomfortable. As we settled in for the night in the town of Cebu, we knew that if we were going to be traveling every day for a month on this motorcycle, something had to change. This is the story of us transitioning from being overloaded to slightly minimalistic. Minimalistic plus. <laughs> Hey everyone, nice to have you here. We are Tim and Marissa No Tear. I ride in the front and I'm in the rear. We travel the world and we pack too much gear. Oh, all the places, places we'll go. go through rain and through sleet and through mud and through snow. Oh, all the, the things, things we'll see. see. We've been to a country or two or three. Oh, all the, the fun, fun we've, we've had. had. You have you along would make us real glad. So give us a like and, and hit subscribe to join us along our epic ride. So we stayed at this really nice hotel that night, but it had one weird quirky thing about it. The window, it had a window, which it was did. great. It let in light but it faced this <laughs> concrete wall right there. <laughs> it used to, it had to have been a, an addition at some point because we were definitely yeah. looking out at what used to be its roof. Good morning, everyone. We are once again getting on the road on our KTM 250 heading to Brunei. We're not gonna quite get there yet. It's still gonna be a long day with a lot of miles. This is a huge island, but we're gonna get that much closer to Brunei, which Check is really, really exciting. View. Oh, the view from our window is amazing. Oh my goodness. Wow. Mold spores. Mold spores. Oh my God. The Last of Us. We are in The Last of Us. <gasps> yeah, but it was a very good hotel, a very good hotel room. We got lots of rest, which we really needed. Everybody. After, you know, after you haven't been riding for a long time and then you start riding again, it's a little bit rough that first day. You know, you need to get back in the saddle. Your butt needs to kind of adjust itself. So uh, that was a problem, but the biggest problem that we had is that we are very, very squished on this motorcycle. And it's mostly because all of our luggage is in the back bag, so it's like huge. And the way the rack is, it's way up high, so it pushes me forward. So today we've been trying to pack it so that it is not as pushed forward and I'm taking some stuff out of my backpack. Like we're, we're trying to experiment here to make sure that it's just a little bit more comfortable because I was squished. So we'll see if that works today. For us to both be comfortable, I had to try to shimmy the, the back bag back a little bit further. Okay, so this is what we've come up with for the back bag. We want it to be as far back as possible so that my backpack and my back isn't hitting it way up here. So Tim did a really good job of pushing everything back. But the other thing was there are these little bags on top of the back bag that we use, one for our shoes and one for our rain gear. And so you were geniusly able to kind of push them on the back end of the back bag so that I had more space for, for myself and my backpack. <laughs> the backpack on her back was going smack against the back bag. <laughs> so I moved the shoe bag to the back of the back bag so that her back wouldn't go smack. 
the back. On the back. So that's that. All right, we're gonna go. But again, there was not a lot of like places to grab from. Yeah, this just had like a sports bike like mm -hmm. tail sticking up in the sky with nothing to, to tie it down to. You didn't tie it to the muffler? I didn't tie it to, you know, you could have tied it to the <laughs> wheel, but that <laughs> wouldn't have worked for very long. With elastic, it'd be perfect. That's true, with enough elastic. <laughs> You're onto something. That's why I bring her along. <laughs> so much better. Haha. <laughs> I have so much room now. But once I got on the motorcycle, I immediately felt less squished and much better. But our luggage setup problems on this motorcycle were far from over. Oh, so much better with this back bag with all the things kind of pushed back. Good. Feels really good. It's time for me to go. Burn all bridges. All I know, I got lost along the way. Fell between the phone, pulling stitches. Time to let go. So come what may. I had more room because Marissa had more room, so the trio of man, yes. woman, and machine were quite happy. Yes! We passed like this cool Chinese temple thing yeah. on the right. It was huge! It did look really cool. Yeah, but there was no like U-turn place to get back to it. And you know, we had such a long day the day before, I yeah. didn't really feel like making a bunch of pit stops. Mental note to maybe on the way back, if I saw it, I'd be pull in there. I also noticed as we were going along that we were passing these very modern style longhouses. It's almost like motels. <laughs> That's like <laughs> but permanently lived in. Yeah, apartments. Yeah. Well, Sometimes on stilts. Too. But the main thing about it is you have just one long structure, usually made out of concrete, but occasionally you'll see some wood involved, and it'll just be rows of doors leading to the separate individual apartments. Yeah, and I get your motel analogy now. Yeah. Like the ground level, one floor. Yeah. But raised up. Yes, and this is based off of the longhouses that the indigenous people of Borneo would build. And so they're just taking that idea, which is a great concept of communal living with your own private space as well, and applying it to the modern world. In the town of Bintulu, we made a lunch stop at just a random place that we found. No sugar. No sugar, no milk. Hello. What's your name, my friend? My name is Scott. Scott? Yes. Hey, it's a good name. Tim. Gosh, everyone here is so friendly. We've been experiencing this all throughout Indonesia and then here in East Malaysia as well, but people are just great. They Generally all want to say happy. hi. Yeah, big smiles. Yeah. All right, we're getting some mi goreng. No, it's uh, bihun, which is tiny noodles fried oh, with chicken. Dumplings. Oh, they have dumplings. Bread. Oh, they have bao. Maybe I'll get some of that too. Yeah. Mm. So they had these little food items called pows. I had uh, known them more as like baltsa in Chinese. Um, they're like steamed so, buns. Yeah, go with steamed bread, not food item. <laughs> <laughs> we ate a food item. <laughs> All right. So this is pow. Do you remember what it's what it means? Satchel. Yes. Apparently, pao means satchel, which makes sense, and it's a steamed bread with wonderful things on the inside. And this one is sweet barbecue chicken. But yeah, bouts is what they're called. They're steamed buns, and they usually have. Hopefully, if you're lucky, you find one with some like barbecue chicken. Yeah. Or you know some other stuff. The majority of them are like bean paste, which is not the sweet version. Not necessarily. It's good. It's good. Yeah, it's great not bit your of breaking favorite. show. It's like, oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Mung bean paste Mung again. Mung bean paste again. <laughs> this part? No. <laughs> not as flavorful. <laughs> But when we went back to the motorcycle after lunch, we saw that the Moscomoto bag was uh, kind of yeah. drooping to one side. And again, just the tilt of the motorcycle, mm -hmm. even with our little, we needed a bigger block to put the, the kickstand on. And then we needed a better way of tying the motorcycle or the bag to the motorcycle so it wouldn't droop over, so. Yeah, and the other thing is that back bag is nice and wide. Yeah. It's our really only luggage. We have to fit everything in there, so that's great. But the little tiny rack yeah. is like this wide. So you're balancing this whole wide thing on something like this and it's just bound to fall to either side. So my brain, I like to think of potential solutions. We just needed a better base to put the bag somewhere to give Marissa the room, to make sure the bag was stable and all that goodness. As we went along towards the town of Miri, we did hit some inevitable Southeast Asian rainstorms. I saw that there, we were right on the coast and the ocean, I didn't know what ocean it was, was like right <laughs> there somewhere. I saw a little road that looked all beat up and nasty going to the left towards the ocean. And by God, I, I take every little beat up nasty road that looks like it potentially goes to the ocean. And we did. bumped down this little sandy knoll ridge from where the asphalt turned into sand and skidded our way to the, what ocean? You're the nerd. The South China Sea. South China Sea. <laughs> down to where the water compacted the sand and it was firm and you know I wanted to ride up and down the beach with the beautiful yeah. the sun setting you know and like I love riding on beaches. It was smooth riding. Yeah we had a little photo shoot with nature. Thank you.
met. It was amazing. All right, so we made it to one of the seas. We're not even sure. I rented it for you, I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> there were no structures, yeah. there was no nothing. Yeah. And it was pristine and perfect, and it was just us and the crabs. And we're on a rented motorcycle, so you know I was riding in the little... Oh, <laughs> riding in the, the surf, it was awesome. So we want to dedicate this beach riding experience that we had to Emmaus Moto Tours. Emmaus Moto Tours takes people on the BDRs, which are the backcountry discovery routes. They're some of the best roads in the United States. They are incredible riding experiences. And you get a lovely tour. Yes. So you won't get lost in, uh, this is our own BDR. This is our, our beach discovery route. Ooh. First time we had been <laughs> off-road on our KTM, so. Yes. Emmaus Moto Tours does a great job of guiding you, bringing you to amazing places. So be sure to check out EmmausMototours.com and check out their whole lineup of all the BDRs they offer. It's a guaranteed fabulous time. As we were pulling into Miri, this town is kind of like a beach resort area. A lot of people come over from the nearby country of Brunei, and so it had all these lovely houses along the sea, and the sun was setting right behind the waves. Yeah. It was gorgeous. had our dinner and went back to the hotel and went to sleep dreaming of that wonderful yeah. beach. Next time on Two Up and Overloaded, we visit the bizarre and mysterious country of Brunei and come right up to the golden gates of one of the richest men on earth. Here's the guy right here. Can we just take a picture? And also, I make a very serious writing mistake. Usually I'm the one who makes that should be my line. <laughs> but that's all in the next episode. So we hope that you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe bell below. Ding, ding. I don't know, nice life. And we'll see you next time. Yeah. And we'll see you next time. And if you want to sport some of your own two up and overloaded gear, we do have a couple shirts, we got some stickers, 
We have books. We have uh, a whole plethora of adventure, motorcycle-related stuff. And it's not just two up and overloaded merchandise. We also sell t-shirts that have some other really cool slogans. Yeah. So check it out at www.twoupandoverloaded.com slash shop. Indeed, and we'll leave a link in the description below. So thanks for all the support out there, guys, and we can't wait to see you next time. Bye. Peace. But that back bag is heavy, and you're the one who always has to carry it up the floor. I'm these sorry. Guys, <laughs> they know why out there. <laughs> Someone's TV screen just cracked. <laughs> Couldn't handle it. Put those away. Any motel, though. You're, I mean, I, I, I think that the uh, the Malaysian community are far less likely to have like crime and annoyance, and you know, but way more karaoke machines. Way more. Oh my God! I don't know what would be worse. Wow, blew my mind. It's got to be karaoke every night in one of the rooms, this at least, true. of those long houses. Yeah.